We have access to food around the clock, and many modern foods have been refined, changing the way our bodies handle them. These changes leave our metabolisms one-dimensional, making it hard to switch between running on both glucose and fat. In this video, I'll explain how to make your body more efficient at switching between whichever fuel source is available and how that renewed metabolic flexibility will make you a better fat burner. The easiest way to think of metabolic flexibility is to think of a hybrid car. Hybrids can utilize both a gas-powered engine and an electric motor to run the vehicle. A metabolically flexible body is similar in that it runs efficiently on different fuel sources. In the case of the body, those fuels are glucose and fat. So being metabolically flexible means that your body can efficiently switch to running on the most available fuel, which at any given time could be glucose from your diet or stored glucose, which is glycogen, dietary fat or stored fat, and if glucose is low enough, your liver turns some of the available fat into ketones, providing an additional type of fuel that is particularly beneficial to your brain. Being this metabolically efficient comes with some perks. Because your body always has an option to meet its energy needs, you experience sustained energy and freedom from hunger. And because a portion of your energy is coming from fat, you have an easier time with weight loss. Back in the days before we had highly processed foods and 24 seven access to foods, our bodies had no trouble with metabolic switching. However, our eating habits and food choices have changed. Many of the foods that are readily available have been highly refined and combined with unhealthy vegetable oils. The refining breaks down the original fiber and nutrients in the food, making them absorb into our systems quickly. That quick absorption coupled with the unhealthy fats leads to insulin resistance, which is a state in which the cells resist the onslaught of energy coming to them. If you eat multiple times a day, that constant feeding adds even more energy to your system that has nowhere to go. This nutrient overload, along with the development of insulin resistance, is thought to contribute to the impaired fuel switching that we see with metabolic inflexibility. If your goal is to lose weight, you want to become more metabolically flexible. You can do that by changing when you eat, how you move, and what you eat. Let's take a look at each one of these. Intermittent fasting is the practice of cycling between periods of eating and not eating or fasting. There are different ways to practice intermittent fasting, but a common form is time-restricted eating, meaning that you reduce or restrict the number of hours a day in which you are consuming food down to eight to 10 hours, for example. During those fasting hours, your body is using up the circulating glucose and then breaking down glycogen. When that energy is used up, your body must look for a new fuel source. What is available? Fat. So fasting forces your body to go through the trouble of breaking down fat for energy. The more this is practiced, the better your body becomes at switching to fat, improving your metabolic flexibility. Exercise is helpful because it improves insulin sensitivity. Insulin sensitive cells are more efficient at switching between burning glucose and fat. Now, while there is some argument for intense exercise like weightlifting or high intensity interval training being the most helpful, any increase in physical activity will help. What you choose to eat is certainly an important factor in this equation. The most important first step is to choose whole foods over processed or refined foods. So think of foods that still resemble the original plant or animal that they came from rather than foods that come in a box. The slower absorbing whole foods trickle energy into your system instead of overtaxing your system with energy that must get stored. An additional step you can take is lowering the overall carbohydrate intake of your diet. Carbohydrates break down into glucose. If you limit the glucose coming in, your body must move to the next available fuels, which are glycogen and fat. If enough glucose is depleted, your liver makes ketones out of the fatty acids, raising your metabolic flexibility to an even higher level. The interesting thing to note is that you don't need to be on a ketogenic diet for your body to make ketones. Ketones are needed by your brain when glucose is too low. So any action you take that depletes glucose could lead to ketone production. For instance, 
I do not follow a keto diet, but I do eat a low carb diet and practice intermittent fasting. So it is not unusual for me to test my blood in the morning and notice the presence of ketones. So you can make your body more metabolically flexible and therefore train it to be a better fat burner. To do so, practice intermittent fasting, get more physically active, and reduce the overall carbohydrate content of your diet, especially refined carbs. If you're interested in learning which foods are healthy, low-carb choices, I have a downloadable list of 100 plant and animal-based low-carb foods, and I will point to where you can get that list here on the video and below in the description area. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when my next video is released. Till then, have a great week.